the Seahawks beginning to open the game up a little bit talking about the slow pace at the beginning like a fight where there's nothing but jabs and now Hasselbeck moves to his left throws caught touchdown but here comes a flag it's Darrell Jackson who makes the catch and the flag thrown at the end of the play and that's what I was saying Matt Hasselbeck does so well there's going to be a penalty here but He'll start to scramble, but he doesn't run. He just keeps looking upfield and finds that open Pass guy. Number 82. Off the Wipe it out. Yeah, it's something that Matt Hasselbeck saw all the way because he started running down there. Here's Jackson. He's going to start outside. Then he's coming on the in right there. And then and then he feels the scramble. So he goes into a scramble drill and he put that right hand up there. You know when you think of push offs that's not the kind you think about really. He pushed Chris Pope away. So two big penalties have cost Seattle two big plays in the first quarter which is two minutes to go. And the problem with Jackson on that play was right in front of the official but again he was finished running his pattern he was going into scramble drill. And you see again he's running the pattern here his pattern is an in. Now he sees and feels Hasselbeck scramble so he goes to scramble drill. You just keep moving find an opening for him but in doing so and look it's right in front of the official he pushed off with his right hand. Alexander comes out. He's already carried eight times for 23 yards third down and two. And the pass is caught but then it is lost it is incomplete. Incomplete, never had possession. Jeremy Stevens, the tight end, hit by Chris Hope. So no fumble, incomplete, and fourth down coming up. Yeah, we're talking about Chris Palomalo and how they move move him all around. I mean, Troy Palomalo, how they move him all around. And then when that happens, then Chris Hope is a free safety. So if Palomalo is coming up and playing underneath, the guy that has to play the whole middle of the field is the guy that make the hit right there. Action pass. And instead it's Roethlisberger on a keeper diving. And does he get there? Yes, he does. The linesman came in. It looked like he was going to spot it. Then he came closer. And Roethlisberger is able to score the touchdown on the 11th play of the drive. Yeah, I think the way the Seattle defense hit that second down play, I think they had to come up with something like this where you where you give them the tailback you give them the fullback and then you let the quarterback make the play for you and a reviewable play if Mike Holmgren's coaches upstairs tell him that they want this to be challenged you can challenge this play you take a look does the ball does the ball get to the the the, the, the goal line and I, I take it uh, back about the guys upstairs this is up to the replay official now because we're just inside two minutes just inside the two minute warning to the guys upstairs does the replay official upstairs want to take a look at this Bill Levy is going to take a look at this because it's close enough the key here is that any part of the ball goes over or touches any part of the goal line. in other words the front of the goal line is part of the end zone and initially it looked as if he was going to spot the ball. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's the call on the field. And it's a touchdown for the Steelers. Just any part of the ball breaking the plane of the goal line. But he either saw that it did or couldn't tell whether or not it did. Right. And he stayed with the call on the field. Third down and six from the seven yard line. Haynes is their third down back. He's in the backfield. They send him in motion and empty it. Four man rush. It's flipped to the outside and intercepted by Kelly Herndon. Herndon to the 30. Roethlisberger is the only guy out in front of him and he gets blocked out of the play. And then for Herndon finally runs out of game gigantic play on a pass intended for Cedric Wilson. Once I saw the Steelers get that ball put Jerome Bettison get down in the red zone Bill Cowher folded arms 
I didn't think I would see this. He said Herman just undercuts that one. He's tried to get Cedric Wilson to the outside. He just undercuts it, goes right up the field, gets a good block there by D.D. Lewis. Clock that, is their friend at 8.41. And that's why Bill Cower loves those gadget plays, because it does change momentum. Hasselbeck, and he's going to run for a first down. And Hasselbeck's going to make the most of it, and then Hasselbeck loses the ball at the 35-yard line. And the question is, was he down? And they're going to say no, at least for the moment, and recovered by Polamalu. The question is, was he contacted? All he did was fall down. If he just fell down and wasn't contacted, it's a fumble. Not down by contact. It is a fumble. First down, Pittsburgh. That's when the ground, that's the one instance when the ground can cause a fumble when you're not contacted. Now you saw that foot actually might have gotten a little bit of his jersey. Hasselbeck goes down, but the ground at that point, yes. Now, was he touched by 50? You see that on that view, the, the official obscures it. But if they want to review this, the question is, was he contacted? Yes, look at this. I think Mike Holgren, uh, um, he just challenged. I was just going to say. And you'll see in a second, Levy's going to make the call here. After reviewing the play, the runner was touched by number 50 of the defense prior to going down. It'll be first and 10 on the 34-yard line. Seattle has not charged the timeout. And that's all that needed to, to have happen for Foot. Foot touched him. And then at the end of the play will be watch Hasselbeck's left elbow. There's the contact. He still has possession of the ball. When does he lose possession? He loses possession after the left elbow hits the ground. The second the left elbow hits the ground, end of play. Lines up, and it's the same thing with Joey Porter. They're always going to have blockers on him, not let him have a free edge. Seattle pressing the pace, and the pass is caught over the middle, and it's Jeremy Stevens who takes the ball to the one-yard line. So the tight end, and what a day he's had, but there's a flag down. A flag and holding. holding. Number 75 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's the right tackle that Sean Locklear holding that time. Yeah, holding he was, Clark Hagens. He was holding Clark Hagens. Hagens came back in, and you're going to see him rush from the outside here. Locklear makes a pretty good move with that right arm. Oh, I didn't see holding. I mean, you have to be able to jam up in there. And, uh, you know, there may have been holding, but it wasn't in that picture. I mean, Sean Lockler wasn't really bad on that play. Holding is a call, as we know, John, that's not always seen. Well, they always <laughs> say that, you know, you can call holding on any play, but what we saw there, I did not see holding. Not just a great running back with average speed. He has good speed. Close to a horse, Donald, but no call. Third down and 18. Hasselback throwing, and it's intercepted at the five-yard line by Ike Taylor. And Ike Taylor is brought back to the 28-yard line where he's tackled by Matt Hasselback. And a flag comes in at the end of that play. Okay, when that flag came in, though, that's not going to affect the interception. No. That'll be post-possession. Post-possession foul at the end of the play, right in front of the Pittsburgh bench. Personal foul. Block below the waist. Number eight of the passing team. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's Hasselbeck. Interestingly, that's Tony Carrenti there in the, uh, the warm-up jacket with the uh, zebra stripes underneath he would be the backup referee now here's the deal on this play we think it's a bad call if Hasselback is making a tackle he can go low if you go low on a blocker and the call was that he went low on 26 Townsend that was a cut and that's why they argued the call to no avail can't review something like that the ball's at the 44 and Parker takes it up to the 46 yard line so it's kind of like insult injury at that particular point you have the interception after you thought you were down at the one yard line in the pass to Stevens the penalty the pick the penalty and now Pittsburgh with ten and a half has it near midfield yeah, and that was one of the things the officials thought they saw something they didn't see and that was Matt Hasselbeck just making a pretty good play in a tackle and getting penalized for it again if you cut a blocker low that's a penalty but that time he, he made the tackle low and that's legal.